Hey, this is Bob. Welcome back to my channel. I got a message for you today. You know, I was um, rec trying to recollect when I was not a Christian and how I used to think. And I do this a lot. I don't know why. I guess I just try to understand what the non-Christian, where he's at, you know, and then how can I, we reach him with the gospel? I'll tell you what, it hardly ever works, but my brain always continues to go back that way. Um, maybe it's it'll pay off through these videos or some other way, but what I wanted to say is that, you know, a lot of times when I would find somebody who were a believer in God, who were early into the scriptures, um, who talk about God and, and I had this thing I would say wow that guy or that girl you know she's cheating that's not right it's not it's not fair you know you're not supposed to be reading the Bible and learning about God you know that's cheating you, you, you know it, it was like this sense I had that of course everything's going you know their way or or life makes sense or or things are working out and they're crediting God of course because they read the Bible you know my mind was made up not to read the Bible and try to win anyway do it my way and and that we didn't need God you know I think about uh there's a canal down where I live, and when I was just a boy, I asked my parents, you know, was it man-made or God-made? And they told me it was man-made, and I was like, yes, it's man-made. God didn't make this can canal. You know, I mean, it's like 30 miles long. And why would I react like that? You know what I mean? I, it proves that I was at enmity with God, or I was an enemy of God, that my flesh, you know, the doctrine of total depravity, you know, it, it was true, you know, I mean, I was fallen, I was um, an enemy of God, you know, but the Bible says he dies for his enemies. Jesus died for his enemies while they were still his enemies. Now look, I was his enemy and he died for me you know many people would die for their friends i would maybe somebody would the bible says maybe possibly somebody would die for their friends right most people wouldn't but it's possible somebody might right but no one's gonna die for their enemies nobody and uh, that's what jesus did that's what we're dealing with here we're dealing with a god who died for his enemies died for people who would kill him and praise God we have that kind of God you know we have a God that's almighty and he he's done he's gone that extra mile for us you know you can't say that God is doesn't care about you he can't say that he's distant and you know every moment is under his jurisdiction I think about the time when the angels saved me when I was falling into a bunch of dogs and at that moment I'm falling back the dogs right there and an angel saved me I mean how fast was that you know God is sovereign he, his wills being done you know he's showing that he's greater than evil that's one of the main points about God is he's showing that he's stronger than evil he's above evil he's choosing he doesn't have to choose anybody but he's cho chose his people the people who would who would believe not everyone's gonna believe so it's hard to you know fathom that but that's that's just the way it is you know but that doesn't mean it's it's right or it, it that doesn't mean it's wrong it, it's what god has decided 
and and but we have a message to declare that'll help people get saved and they can get saved it's so easy just to believe you cross over from death to life and you are justified before God you're called holy even though you're a sinner I mean it's an offer you can't refuse why why anybody would you know it's a message and it's heard it, it's not a do's and don'ts anymore those those Ten Commandments were there to just show us our need. The message is believe and be saved. Today is the day of salvation. And when you believe, you are marked with the Holy Spirit guaranteeing what's to come. The Bible says that multiple times. And you have the word that you can feed on. You know, it's the words, the Bible's the number one seller. You know, you can get out there and read it. And the God and Satan, the devil, he doesn't want you to read it. So if you want to cheat on the devil, to see the devil is the God of this age, and he is your father right now. The Bible says that, but you can break free from that and cheat on the devil by reading the Bible. And that's a good thing. Cheat on the devil today and read the Bible and get saved and live forever in glory. And, you know, this is not pie in the sky. This is foundational stuff. It's historical stuff. It's provable stuff. And it's what life's all about. You know, and the, the meaning of life is to glorify God and enjoy him forever, as, as the confessions have said. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Why? Well, because he is worthy. He's worthy to, to enjoy. He's worthy to be glorified after all he's done for us. He's, he, he's redeemed us from the pit, you know, at great expense to him. He went that extra mile, hung on that cross, the worst death any person could ever suffer is on a cross. For all those hours he suffered and he said it is finished and he said not my will but your will be done you know he went to the cross he died he made a way the way is by grace through faith he made a way to heaven and if you die before the rapture the angels will take you to absent with the body present with the Lord the rapture is a first phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ where he he removes those he calls righteous we are only called righteous because we have faith you know we're still sinners hopefully we don't sin as much but either way once you were born again you have that faith and you you are seen as righteous in God's eyes so that's a beautiful thing and uh how beautiful are the feet, the Bible says, are those on the mountain who bring good news. You know, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Jesus is my king. You need a king in this life. <laughs> you know, the Israelites were criticized because they didn't have a king. Um, I wish I can remember the prophet, but... Uh, I know the minister on the TV, and I want to say his name was um, Hayden, Ben Hayden. In 1992, I was watching that television. I had it on, and he was talking about how Israel had no king. And all of a sudden, it re I realized I had no king. I had a need. I thank you, Ben Hayden, who just went with the Lord about two or three years ago. He was about 90 years old. That's a great thing to think about you need a king you need a savior we need to get saved he's our redeemer you know a savior he is our the resurrection he is our resurrection i am the resurrection that's what jesus says you know when we're weak he is strong at our weakest point is our death that's when he's the strongest so there's tremendous hope there's tremendous future but it's an urgent message that people need to understand. You know, think about God. Think about God, you know. He is worthy of your thoughts. You know, the Jonas Kepler, 
discovered the planetary orbit. And his famous line is, I was thinking God's thoughts after him. It's amazing what you can do when you think, when you think about God. Consider God. Remember your creator, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. You know, he he is uh, <laughs> he's worth your time. He's worth your three seconds. He's worth your nine seconds. You know, the 30-second attention span that we used to have is now down to three. It used to be 30 because of the television commercials patterned our minds for 30 seconds. But now we're down to three seconds, you know. And God, he saved me in less than a second with those angels. I would have been dog meat, dog food. So that's my message today, all right? And I hope you receive it. And I hope you receive Jesus. And today is a good day to do it. All right, I wish you the best. See you next time.